All right, and we return once again in Legend of Keepers. I forgot to mention last episode that this is a sponsored playthrough. I have received a copy of Feed the Troll from uh, Goblins Publishing. So thanks a lot to them for that. And it's always, I mean, Goblins Publishing, if you don't haven't checked out their portfolio, they do some of the best games. Like, of course, there are other good game companies out there, but these guys, they just... They spit out gold left and right. It's kind of crazy. They have their fingers in so many pies. Legend of Keepers, for example. Let's focus. So it is week seven, and we have to deal with an engineer again, where we could upgrade for gold, but this little icon here will let me know that I cannot afford anything in this room. Then we've got the collectors and the event again. Collectors are cool. These are tax officials, uh, and they, they're also vampires. So they will accept uh, my blood and actually pay me money uh, instead of paying taxes. So, uh, or we can give them blood from heroes. I prefer to give them my blood. Uh, I'm at full health and I recover 14 life per week. So we have like this resource down here and technically, which we can use to get 200 gold and 200 gold. That's a lot of money. So there you go. And I immediately start regenerating. Next up, we can go for a workout, which is not a bad idea per se. Uh, therapist is not something we do very often, but workout then, um, that allows me to spend blood, tears, and gold to level up my, my master. Now, we don't have a lot of blood, though, and we have no tears, so it's very likely that I will only be able to get one upgrade. And I think it would be more prudent to just do events and save up a bit more before we start working out. Doing the long haul kind of play here. So use let's use that event button there again. Icarus, a wizard with a strange hat, has fallen from the sky and landed in the entrance hall. He was carrying a magical artifact, so we can take it or we can sell it. This is a pocket mirror. Damage of... Damage of the first attack suffered by monsters placed at the back is returned to the assailant once per fight. Oh, wow. That is super cool. Not only do we not take damage, but we deal it back to them. Yes, please. Now we have three artifacts already, and we can only have five. This would be the reason to sell it, as because sometimes when we do get to that five and we get a sixth, we just get nothing. And so, and sometimes we get the options to sell them, but they're kind of rare as well. And so, could have been prudent to sell it here to make room for future artifacts, but eh, uh, three is fine. Now we gotta start be wary. Oh, and there's a champion fight coming up. Yeesh. Yeah, uh, we'll do an event again though. Gold for the Destroyer. What is this? Do you have a moment to spare? To <laughs> do you have a moment to spare to talk about our Lord and Tormentor, Gold for the Destroyer? Love it. These look like Javas, but I suppose they could also be cultists. So we can refuse. That'll give me tears because they cry like little bitches. We can accept and then everyone in my, uh, well, all my employees will get plus one motivation. That's what this means. Or we can kill them and gain blood. But we have, we have a hard time gaining tears. So I think it's uh, worth a lot to make them cry and run away. No talking about go for the destroyer today. Merchant. I very rarely go for the merchant. Um, it's like something you do if you have f more than a thousand gold, in my opinion. Not before. Therapist is kind of in the same ballpark. It's like a very situational thing. Normally, we just do events whenever. So let's do one right now. We got the garbage chute. The workers union has made a request, an anonymous suggestion box for the employees. Even if they can't write, these, uh, the simple gesture will boost morale. Uh, they don't need to know what suggestion but will be empty straight into the trash. <laughs> plus one motivation for all available monsters. 50, 50 gold for plus one motivation. Um, for five different monsters. I, I don't think that's worth it. Um, no. If we, had, if we had more monsters that would gain something from it, then maybe. But no, nah, we refuse. And now we have a tough choice here. Champion this early sounds difficult, but the other two fights are going to be hard as well. Ooh, and look at that. These are some really nice rewards, all of them. Uh, I wouldn't want the artifact, but I would like the master bonus. 
and the rare there the the star icon means we get a rare monster or a rare trap i think both of which are very powerful but the master bonus honestly are some of the best things we can get just a flat upgrade to the master which is some of the most important upgrades we can have other cool monsters and traps even though they're not rare that they could still be good and i i uh i have a feeling that we could lose to the champion so with that reasoning we're doing the veterans we are going to think a little bit about our setup here. Like I said, we have the, the electrical coil with, which applies air weakness. We want to have that in, in, in front of a room where we're playing the two Amaru's. So I think these are maybe, so there's a new button that I should try out. We can swap rooms like this, flip it, uh, and have these two in the second room. I think that's way more powerful. We will get the Shukakabra up to the front. We, want, we need the Naga in the second room because it's better when there's only one hero remaining, which is more likely in the second room. This setup looks fine to me then. I will move you to room one because you have nature resistance, which we have plenty of here. Yes. Good stuff. Also air damage though, but so so the Naka does air damage too. Yeah, yeah. So that lots of air damage here. Very nice. But we might be able to do the damn champion. God damn it. No, I want the master bonus. Yes. So we don't get to see a cool hero, but <laughs> at least we live. So um we've got a novice, a monk here. Level 2, he does ice damage to the front, penalizes uh, my units that are under 50% health, removes the penalty with the most acts applied from all heroes at the start of his turns one, once. And then we've got area nature damage. I don't think I've seen you... I have seen him before, the midsole. He is fairly new. Applies dodge one to the hero with the lowest life percent at the start of each fight. Okay, very cool. Not super annoying, but... And another passive healer, damn. This is tough, and he dodges the first trap, does fire damage to the back line, but that will be bounced back with the pocket mirror. Very cool. Ice front, nature area, fire to the back. So ice, 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 baby. It'll be... I think you go up front, you got high ice resistance. Fire to the back, fire 40. Yeah, so you'll be the backliner. And then I want the Shuka Cabra. So, oh, no, not, not you. There. And that makes the pocket mirror light up for some reason. Because I put a creature here, but like I didn't know that was going to happen. Sure, whatever. Yeah, no, we'll be fine in this fight, I think. Not in this particular fight, but in, in general, in the whole dungeon here, I, I'm fairly confident. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. Fire to the back. They all have fire 25. It was ice front. So ice, ice, baby. Like that. <laughs> this will be a slaughter, I think. Roll. All right. Well, that was super annoying. Oh, that that triggered the pocket mirror. mirror. His... Um, his area attack, I didn't think of that. Okay, that was annoying. Uh, he's got a defense that we can take out with the Lunar Beam. Yeah, we want to activate the Lunar Beam. That does boost his attack, which is annoying. Now Ice is boosted, and she is Ice Weakness, and we do Ice to the back here, so easy choice. Take her out. And we can do fire or ice to the front here. He's got very low fire resistance, but this does good damage to the middle hero too. She will heal all of them, so it's better to focus da heal damage on one, I think. Eh. Mm -hmm. This would do the most single target damage and try to finish him off. 
Yeah, I think I like that more. I'm kind of weirded out. Wasn't he supposed to get burned? Oh, only if he was below a certain percentage. That's right. Right, right, right. Dang it. Oh, look at that. That's a lot of damage. And then we can kill her before she shoots again. No, we cannot, because the my frontliner heal will die next turn to you. Damn. So, exsanguination on the frontliner, or do a ton of damage to her. And then the traps will kill her. Oh, and she's the healer, so that would be nice before the next... Yeah, she would die before the next fight where she would heal everyone. Definitely take her out. Now, yeah, well, she lives here, but she's dead. Oh, she dodged the trap, that's right. Okay. Well, we could kill her here, but she will die to the Tesla coil. I'm not so sure. No, she wouldn't. Dang it. And I don't want to flip the blessing. Or do I? Flipping the blessing wouldn't be that bad. Uh, they don't do fire or physical, so... It wouldn't help them. In fact, they do ice damage. Uh, but it would debuff all of my uh, air damage here. But killing killing her is so important. So I think we're doing the area damage here. I could do the single target damage to her, but that doesn't really make sense. We'll do the, the area damage and just flip the blessing. That's fine. Here we reduce their air resistance. And so this is going to be a right slaughter here. Again, the mirror flex the damage back to him. The first attack is blocked there, but that's fine. And then we kill him. Oh, and then we kill the next one in, in line. Easy. Good. And we get to upgrade our boss. So we can upgrade the whirlwind spell and that's why I like upgrading the boss or the master usually. Um, upgrading his spells can be very powerful and so for, for example the frost whirlwind already is a super powerful effect now we can make it even more powerful. Uh, this is a one of his own attacks when he's in the fight so then this one would become more powerful or we can have him have higher armor which would be nice. And the Frost Whirlwind will be more effective in general. Because we can use that in almost every dungeon. It's very rare that the heroes will get to the Shaman. And so the armor will not be applied very often. Same theory for the Skewering. Uh, but stacking resistances and stuff obviously can be powerful. I feel like the Frost Whirlwind is actually a mistake if I pick it. It would either be the skewering, because that would be a lot of extra damage done in fights. Or we would go for the armor, which I think is more general protection. I'll go for the skewering. I think my gut tells me that this will be the best choice. Good stuff. Merchant, doctor... I don't want to pay to heal my hero. He will be fine. So we'll go for the merchant just to see what we can buy. Got a giant aura, which is a spirit. Okay. Never seen this one before. It's very cheap. Does air damage. Applies tiredness and fire damage to apply burn. Activates solar blessing. Okay. Well, now you're talking. Um, fairly weak creature, but high speed, which is important. This determines when they're at acting in combat. We can also get the circular saw for 70 now. This is the one that we were offered for 50 gold earlier, so we could have saved some money. I think buying the giant aura is worth it. So I will buy that one and leave it at that. 
there's no limit to what we can buy and we can renew the shop but money can be spent on a lot of things in this game so we will just wait uh a sanctuary will allow us to play a uh, pay i think it's blood and tears maybe even money for temporary bonuses to our marshes in fights but that'll go away again so we're usually not going for that one merchant we just saw what that is business trip then is one of the reasons why it's nice to buy an extra master here and there so that we have someone to send on business trips business trips sends a unit a master away for a certain amount of time 5 18 or 8 weeks and then we get some sort of bonus in return so either money this is what we get by the way not what we pay uh so 175 gold is pretty good and we would get one motivation for only five weeks she would be gone for 18 weeks and we would only get 68 gold but we would also get the transmutation circle masters placed at the front deal two percent additional damage per missing life percent see that's cool but now we're, we're talking about filling up the artifact bar and it's not that good so I'll go for this one over here where we get tears again it's really hard for us to get tears and a lot of gold and the naga here is gone for eight weeks it's a nice monster but we can do without it it'll be fine so we'll take that route we don't have to go to the alchemist to transmute blood into tears we could but I'll grab an event instead slimy yet satisfying a little uh Lion King reference there. All right. A giant worm has oozed its way into the lower levels of the dungeon. What will you do with it once you've killed it? We will heal if we eat it. We can sell it for gold or we can offer it to our monsters, employees, to give them a bit of boost. And we would get... I'm not sure it would work for the Naga since it's not here. So these six monsters would get one motivation. Or <laughs> I could get 100 gold. Money. And let's see what we are looking at this time. Hmm. Oh, look at that. Uh, the veterans will be more difficult, but there's a disaster room. And a disaster room is uh, technically, it's, it works like the spell room. It'll allow me to do a, a thing to them based on the environment, the Aztec ruins in that case. So that's pretty cool. I'm, I Traps, gaining a trap can be fine. The master bonus would be lovely but in this case because we also get the disaster room it will be fine we'll go for the veterans here so diving back in don't feel like i need to make a change here activates solar blessing i think i would move you to room one which means i'd have to move someone back Probably the Hasaki here. I'm not a huge fan of this giant aura, but maybe when I level it up, it'll show some combo potential. Either way, this is good. Confirm. This time we have a ninja coming in. He does nature area damage, applies four poison to the monster with the highest life at the start of each fight. It'll do 20, then 15, 10, 5, so that's 30, ooh, 50 damage in nature. All right. Physical damage to the back from the archer here. She just dodges the first trap, and we've got another one of those little ice wizards who shuffles my monsters in the first fight something to keep an eye on and area ice damage so two area damage units okay who's got the highest speed you do so you will be affected by the mirror it's kind of annoying i didn't think about the fact that area damage would also activate the mirror like i would much rather have 48 damage reflected back than 27 obviously we open with the portal or sorry the, the trap room this time so do we have a lot of air damage here to use with the Tesla coil? The answer is no, so we would go with the Polar Portal. Then comes the first fight room. Physical damage to the backside, so 
that would be one of these two. Nature area and ice area damage. So these are both fine for that. Remember that we get our units shuffled. So by putting these two here, we know that one of them will be put in the last spot where she will be shooting and they both have nice armor. So that way that works out. And then we can put in probably the Sugar Cabra again. Unless I think I can get away with doing the Giant Aura. Do they have fire weakness? Oh, they do in fact have a lot of fire weakness. So maybe just to give the Sugar Cabra a rest, uh, I could use the Firebird instead. It's got nice nature resistance. The ice weakness though. Nice speed though. We can see the initiative order out here. We'll go for uh, the Giant Aura. Then the electrical coil here. And the disaster room, we don't have to make a choice about that yet. This time they will not be shuffled, so they will be in the positions that I put them. Uh, we will probably go Amaru, Hasaki, and then Amaru. Some of them I call by name, some of them I will call by species, whichever is easier. Uh, yeah, that'll be how we do it. Let me think, let me think. So the one in the back will be hit harder. So we'll put the level two back there, like so. Go. <laughs> yeah, very good. Fight. Take a shuffle. Yikes, that hurts. Conflagration then, probably. Activates Solar Blessing, which will boost fire and physical damage. She does physical damage, this lady, and I do fire, physical, and fire. So that'll be fine. It also does more damage. Okay, that wasn't too bad. The fire then. Or the ice. No, we'll do fire. Here, yeah. We'll go for the physical. Get him taken off the field. Should happen here. Oh, lord. Or not. Okay. Yeah, the... the <laughs> at least the, the traps will take him out. Okay. What do we have here? We have morale damage. Okay. Apply slowed, which we know will reduce their power for four turns. Not bad. Uh, we can do pollen cloud, which applies nature weakness. Okay, and we do we can do nature damage with the next room. Swarm of mosquitoes, physical damage, and applies poison. Tough choice. Yeah, we got some good nature damage potential back here. Not a bad idea, I think. Reduced by 40%. It's quite, quite significant. Hmm. Do it. And here, so then I don't want to flip the celestial, uh, sorry, the solar blessing. Well, we kind of do. We do and we don't. It's it's kind of either or. Uh, so if it does the most damage, we might just do it. Oh, that's a lot of fire damage to the back guy in the back. And we apply the bounty, which I talked about in the previous episode. Not a bad thing then. Sure. Even though we don't want to necessarily play towards it. In this case, it was the better choice, I think. So we want to make sure we kill you with one that wants the motivation and you're a decent candidate for that. I think you are more important because you're level 2 though, so you will assess bit on the front here. And here we will go for the frontliner as well. And then you, Pilhuidl, 
we'll take out the backliner there. Oh, I was hoping he would survive that. Okay. Pew pew. And that's it. And we get a trap. Oil Cauldron does 20 fire damage and applies fire weakness. Okay, so we can start to work on some more fire combination. Uh, with Furnace, this one will do it to the, the whole area, every hero. That's 60 fire damage and the fire weakness then. Meanwhile, the Furnace... The thing about burns and frostbites is that it does percentage damage of an enemy's health, and that can be later in the game, that'll be... Uh, more powerful as the enemies will level up. And then Pandora's box does morale damage. Stacks of all penalties applied to heroes increased by two. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Tough choice. All of them are fairly good. If I ever wanted to do some morale stuff, this would be the way to go. And I kind of do. It's nice to have variation in your strategies. Uh, and stacks of penalties applied. We are, we are already trying to do a sort of a penalties build. So let's double down on that. Now we can do the workout. Yes, perfect. This is beautiful. Exactly 30 for the resistances here. We go to the sauna. We upgrade our resistances for 30 uh, tiers. That will upgrade my fire, ice, nature, and air resistance by 5. So just plain good. And we can afford both of these over here. We got regeneration, which will upgrade me to, what, 17 life gain back per week. And then we can gain another 10 armor here. Boom. Good spending of a week. Oh, and we should probably cut the episode right around here after every second invasion sort of makes sense to me anyway. So I'm hoping you guys are enjoying Legend of Keepers. See you soon, guys, and bye-bye.